Good evening and welcome to the Theotech podcast. Uh, we're here with our regulars, uh, minus one plus a guest. Uh, let me start with our regulars. Uh, we've got uh, Wes Allen. How are you tonight, Wes? I do very well. Thank you very much. Good deal. And we've got, uh, we also have LaRosa Johnson out on the West Coast. Hey, hey. And we've got our fearless leader, Kevin Purcell. I just want to say one thing. Uh, I've got an eBay auction up for a really great Tom Brady jersey, and I was yeah. hoping maybe we could get word out about that. So I'll, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to bid half a million on it. Okay. Right. No, you're not. Good to see you guys. <laughs> oh yeah, and, and look, there's our there's our guest. She's really hot. Uh, this is uh, this is actually my wife, Kathy Mansfield, and she's joining us tonight because we're talking about uh, creation of eBooks. And, uh, and self-publishing and that kind of thing. And so she's done quite a bit of that. So she's going to kind of be uh, one of our uh, experts in residence here. But uh, I know that Rosa and Wes have also done that too. So let's start with a general question first. Uh, why would someone want to uh, do this anyway? What would the reasons be? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yes, Mr. Wes. Kata, I get it. The, um, basically, it's a lot of times it's just resources and time. Churches have really old copiers. Some of them aren't even digital. And uh, we pastor writes a devotional study for like Lent or, or Advent or just to, for a Bible study to go through and wants to be able to disseminate it with people or even like retreats or things like that. And rather than spending hours at a copier printing these things out over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, half of which are never going to be used or spending money to have them printed, you create the ebook, you put it on a website, they download it, put it on their device, and they, ju and they just have it. Um, so you're taking out huge amounts of cost, you're using up way less resources, and, and it's just there. Yeah, and, you, you know, if you, if you think about it, we're living in an amazing time because in the past, if, if everyone was going to get a book, and, you know, maybe you do it through church and you might have a book table in the back, uh, or, uh, or they'd have to go to the local bookstore and get that. But we're in an age now where everyone carries, uh, well, you know, here's my, here's my phone here. You know, everyone carries at least something like this uh, that you can put the Kindle app on, that you can put PDF readers on, that you can put, you know, various, mm -hmm. various EPUB readers on. And so, you know, from that to uh, tablets to, you know, we, we, have, we, have the, we have the equipment in every home, you know, in every hand. Uh, and so now we can, you know, it's much easier, I think, to send that out uh, and disperse that than it once was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, LaRosa, you, what was your motivation? You, you, you know, I've often promoted your book because I love that book as a discipleship book for new believers or, mm -hmm. or young, immature believers or whatever. What was, was that your motivation, just to put that in the hands of young believers? Yeah, that was really my motivation. And just to say that, hey, I'm a published author. <laughs> I mean, that's one motivation, but really, like you said, just to put the information out there. It had been available on websites that I had done over the years, and it just got to the point where the, the website that I had was no longer up and running, so it wasn't available for anybody to access it anymore unless you like found it in the Internet Archive. So it was one of those things where I figured, you know what? Let me clean this up. Let me put some polish to it. Take all the things that I've learned from working for Bible software companies over the last uh, decade. And I've actually learned a lot about publishing just from doing my, my day job and figured, let me take all those skills and actually put something out there. Well, and you know, that makes another good point too, you know, on, on the other end, you know, besides everyone having the equipment in hand to receive that, anybody can now be a published author. Uh, you know, in, in the past, there were there were you know uh, publishers who were kind of the gatekeepers for that, yes. and so uh, and and there's still a certain el a certain element of, of that you know if, as far as distribution in stores, brick and mortar stores, those do still exist, I think, but uh, you know uh, Amazon has opened this up. Uh, and Barnes and Noble has opened this up. You know, uh, you you can uh, even even iBooks. You know, from Apple, you can you can self publish to any of these venues, and you know Amazon now has uh, you know million uh, copy sellers of people who have self published there just on Amazon, uh, which is which is just absolutely amazing, uh, and so so you know we are we're in a world where we're in a time where uh, the the Kind of the playing field has been leveled. Now, having said that, there's also 
you know, I've, I've read some self-published books and sometimes you find a lot of errors and things like that, you know, because that, that is one of the, one of the difficulties. In fact, it was, it was real funny. Recently, I had someone contact me. Occasionally someone will contact me wanting me to review their book because, because I've reviewed some on Amazon. And so they get my name. And so I took the book and, and there were like major problems with this book. You know, there, there were, there were some trademark issues that, uh, that, uh, that they were, you know, and so, and, and this, and so this one fella was acting on behalf of the author. And so I sent, you know, I, I sent an email back to him and I said, this book has potential, but here's about half a dozen things you really need to do uh, to make the book better and to get out of trouble and to not be in trouble. Uh, because there were, before there were, you get sued, yes, go. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, uh, so, so, you know, that, that, that is one valuable thing that publishers do offer, but there's also other services or you, you know, if you just know someone who, um, you know, who has some halfway decent editing skills, um, there's, there's, there's ways around that. So, so Kathy, you, um, uh, you have, uh, uh, created a number of books and, and you, you've actually, and I know this because I, I helped you a little bit in the early stages of this. Uh, you, you published on, you know, from Lulu and from Ingram and now you're really big into create space. So yes. why don't you tell us a little bit about that and what got you into it? Well, um, what got me into eBooks in the first place, uh, you've alluded to a little bit, the, just the trending of the publishing industry. I've been a school librarian by profession for 26 years and been a state library consultant, gosh, seven years now. And so I definitely saw the popularity of eBooks with students, um, more middle and high school, elementary students still like that paper book. It's their introduction to that world of reading, but middle school and high school students, they don't want to be toting around a bunch of books. And sometimes they don't want their peers to see what they're reading. You know, if a boy's wanting to read a romance book, he probably doesn't want the other guys to know he's doing that. And if a girl is, you know, reading some sort of sports fiction, perhaps she doesn't want her girlfriends to know that um, she's not reading romances and that sort of thing. So, um, ebooks and um, uh, wireless devices that can hold tons of books. Certainly, the the trend right now in our public schools and in public libraries as well. So, I got interested in writing ebooks um, because of that trend, and because I was starting to make that transition from print to ebooks. So I, I still read print books, but I travel a lot and uh, it's just not helpful to haul all those print books around. I usually have a nonfiction book going and a fiction book at the same time. And um, unless I'm reading picture books for my job, I'm reading young adult or adult books and those are going to be long and heavy and cumbersome. So uh, I have really made that transition to ebooks for myself. Well, that um, encouraged me to investigate that platform for publishing my own work. I had uh, some poems uh, that I started out with that I would share in different venues in Bible studies or um, just with friends for encouragement purposes or even with our um, pastor who would sometimes reference them in a sermon. I, I would know a sermon topic was coming up, a sermon series, and I'd say, hey, I've got this poem. It relates. You know, feel free to use it if you want to. And and sometimes he would. And I thought after I got about a hundred or so of those, I thought, you know, it it's time to put those in into a compilation and to look at different ways to publish it, both print and as an ebook and certainly as an ebook it's much easier to access quickly and to disseminate and, 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 and that's let, my let preferred me, platform right now let me say a word here about Kathy she has a, she has a, her own special style of note taking you know we'll be at church and whether it's a bible study or a sermon or whatever you know she'll have her moleskin journal and she doesn't 
take notes like a regular person you know she's she's artistic but not like not like uh, Antoine who's not here tonight you know he draws when he I said by him Sunday before last and he draws you know but uh, Kathy writes she'll come she'll come out of a sermon and she'll have a poem that she's written oh, from cool. it. You know, and, and uh, you know, it's it's a regular occurrence that, you know, after church, she'll say, you want to hear my new poem? And sometimes she has more than one. <laughs> and so, you know, this was this was one of these things that I encouraged her, you know, uh, that I, I think that you could compile these and put these together. So that, that was part of it. Uh, so, so go ahead, Kathy. I, um, and that was the genesis of, uh, oh, <laughs> pun, Larry, genesis, okay. Theotech. Um, that was the you know, beginning of my um, um, investigating, exploring that world of ebooks. But then I really brought into the process my career of being a children's librarian. I thought, I want to experiment with some picture books and create um, some books that I had not seen represented in the publishing industry in. Uh, that were available for my schools and that I thought that children might be interested in. And so I began to experiment with picture book format for ebooks, which is a little bit different than um, a non picture book format. And there are specific tools available, some different apps and resources that are available to help formatting that particular kind of book. And I am not, as Rick mentioned earlier, an illustrator by any stretch. And so I knew I could not draw illustrations for my book. So I thought, well, I um, can seek out photographs for illustrations. I knew that kids uh, that I had taught over the years really were drawn to, oh, there's another pun, drawn to illustrations, drawn to photographs. And so I looked for ways to um, obtain copyright-free, uh, Creative Commons licensed photographs that would be appropriate for the style of books that I had written. Uh, tell us about some of the books that you, uh, that you have published. I can uh, show some, is that? Yeah, and, and we also want to see maybe how you created some of these as well. Okay, so uh, let me uh, attempt to share my screen here. And uh, you should see part of my Kindle book collection. Let me know if you can. All right, so let me show you an example of one of the first picture books that I created. It's called Counting the Creation. It's a, probably my shortest one. And the illustrations that are part of this book, they're not photographs, but they are illustrations that came from an artist who posts his or her work. I don't know, actually, if it's a he or she. Um, I think it's a guy. Um, post his or her work on Pixabay. and allows for free downloads and there is an attribution statement that pixabay.com requests that you um, attach to any publications that use the illustrations that you're choosing. So again, this was one of my first ones, Counting the Creation. It is a simple counting book and if you notice on the bottom there, on the left-hand side of the screen, um, you can see just a simple statement, images used with permission through Creative Commons licensing from pixabay.com. Let's get into the first pages of the book. Uh, and it begins the counting through the days of creation and what happened on each day. And again, I, uh, as I thought about Sunday school classes that I had taught, um, thought about my own access to picture books as a child. Um, many of them had lots of text and um, some pictures, and certainly times have changed since I was a child. But um, I really saw an opportunity to have something out there that um, would fill that gap. And I, I think I did with this book. So let there be light, the Lord God said, and he called them night and day. That was the beginning of the earth, God's majesty displayed. 
and it goes on and on with uh, each day of the creation and there's rhyming text that goes along with that and this book I created uh, in Word Microsoft Word and then used the publishing platform of create space from amazon.com which is a free service to create that book let me show you another example um, this one Bob's and Troops a nonfiction book about the names of different animal groups a fun topic for kids uh, starts out with just a little introductory rhyme and then we've got color photographs of different groups of animals and children can learn the names a drove of pigs wallows in mud a camel caravan chews its cud and on and on through different animal groups and again those photographs came free of charge from pixabay.com I do have the attribution at the beginning of the book which is required for uh, use of those photographs through the Creative Commons licensing and this book also created in Microsoft Word and then um, published through Amazon's Create Space. Let me stop sharing and see if there are any questions real quick about any of those so far. Kathy, can you show off uh, your Create Space? I want to see that actually in action. Yes. So let me share my screen again. And be sure to show us your, your password. Oh, <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Uh, I've got, I've got your, uh, your screen is not selected, so you can go ahead and uh, not worry so much about what we are seeing. <laughs> okay, because I'm seeing this crazy, um, like, there, you there go. we go. Right, there we go. <laughs> So um, the website, again, it's sponsored by Amazon, but it's www.createspace.com. Uh, you do create an account with um, your email address and a password that, that you choose. And um, there's uh, here where it says ready to go, sign up. I'm already um, have an account there and you can see now that I've logged in, um, here's my royalty balance so far for February. So in U.S. dollars, you can see I am about to retire on my royalties. Um, you have more than I have. <laughs> well, and, and each month it's <laughs> each month it's different, and you know it depends on the uh, the types of promotions I'm doing about the books and. Um, seasonal opportunities. I have a Christmas focus book and a Halloween focus book and so certainly the opportunities for sales for those happen at particular times of the year. You'll see a list of projects that I am I'm either working on or have completed. Um, I'm working on uh, a book right now called Seven Miles to Hope and when I click on that title uh, it brings up a dashboard and shows a minus sign for different aspects of that book that I've not completed and a check mark for the items I have completed so I've created title information for the book and um, an ISBN number has been assigned a free ISBN number that's part of being a part of create space you might want to say, you know, your your Wait second minute, book. They, they give you a free ISBN number? Yeah, that's what yes. I was going to point out. You know, when we did our, our – our, we had to purchase ISBNs, you yeah. know, for the first two books that she did uh, before she started using CreateSpace. And they can be expensive, you know, so so that that's a that's a really nice service. Yeah, the one the one caveat with that. only is, sell through Amazon then, right? No, the thing is the, yes. the, the ISBN is owned by Amazon. But you can right. go in and buy your own if you want to as well. Yes. Which through is what I've Create done. Space? Um, not through Create Space. I forget the actual company that you have yeah, to buy them. There's a thing you buy it from. You buy them in like packs like 10 or something. Yep. Say that again, LaRosa. You can buy it how? Um, if I can find the link for it. Um, but if you just want to sell through Amazon, which is what Yeah, if you only want to sell through Amazon – you can just go directly through them and they'll give you an ISBN 
of their own. Realistically, they've kind of cornered the market, as you know. And, you know, they, they're they also, you can get, even though we're talking about eBooks tonight, you can get print versions of these. So Kathy sometimes will set up a booth and she's got print versions mm -hmm. of these books that she's shown you that she sells as well. Cool. Well, in fact, every single but book. Amazon I, doesn't handle the print, right? Yes, they do. Every single oh, book yeah. I've, I've just shown you uh, is available in print or as an eBook. Do they charge you an amount and then let you set the price of the print book or? Yes. So let me know when you can see my dashboard again and I'll, or the create space and I can kind of show you. Can you see that now? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, let me go into um, one of the books. Um, here's one that's completed I, called I Want to Be an Elf. And... Um, there's a list price of $9.95. It's um, a full color illustrated picture book. Uh, you can see the size six by nine. There's a variety of sizes you can choose, 28 pages, and um, you can choose different categories that you want it advertised in with Amazon. There's an area where you can put a description of the book so that you can focus on different keywords that folks might be searching on. Um, but um, let me go back here. If I wanted to order some print copies of that book, so I want to be an elf, here's order copies. Um, even though the book, right, so even though the list price was nine something, I can't even remember now, I can order copies for $3.65 and then I can mm -hmm. sell them um, print copies at, uh, sometimes I go to, um, like craft fairs, we have a little fireman's fundraiser here in town, uh, conferences, um, library conferences or reading conferences that I might go to, then I can take a supply of books that I've ordered at cost and um, then sell for whatever price I want. I usually sell the print books for less than what someone could order them for on Amazon. It's you know like a discount because you're buying in person from me and I'm autographing mm -hmm. it type thing. Um, and Amazon lets you know what the minimum price is that you must place on your book for sale. And it's not 365. I mean, it would be, um, I don't know what the minimum was for this particular book, but, um, it covers their cost of, um, printing the yeah, book. Whatever for, markup they need for, for to make a profit, mm -hmm. to make it worth, worth, worth yes. their while. Yes. Um, and you can choose the type of royalties that uh, you would like. I think it's, you choose either 35% or 70%. Um, and for the, uh, for the ebooks, at least. Uh, now I'm going to get confused with the print and ebooks. But anyway, uh, with this process for that same book, I want to be an elf. Once I've completed that book, um, I wanted to do it as a print book, but there is an option on the dashboard. Uh, I'm pointing or circling it mm -hmm. with my cursor right now. It says publish on Kindle. It takes you through the steps to trans transition that book or transform that book from a print edition to one that can be uh, easily read on Kindle. They translate it to, I think it's like a, a dot mobi um, mm -hmm. format and prepare it to be marketed and shared through their online. Um, um, Does it matter itself. which direction you go, like what you start with, you know, print versus uh, Kindle, or is that just your preference or your choice? You uh, can do either way, but I've discovered that if I go with the print option first, um, it's just it's easier to then transition to the ebook than to try to create a print book from the ebook. That might Which be just a sense. personal preference for me. No, because ebooks don't have layout. I mean they're they're really just structure. What uh can, can you describe um what is do they guide you through the process of creating covers and what upload formats do they accept? Um you can do you can Upload in Microsoft Word, uh, uh, PDFs. I think, I mean, those are the two main choices. 
Um, they do have a cover creator. Um, I know I keep going back and forth with sharing my screen. Um, I hope you guys don't mind me share it again so I can show you that um, dashboard. So let's pick a book that I am in the middle of working on. So Seven Miles to Hope. I'm going to go to um, cover on the dashboard and I can choose a finish for my cover, matte or glossy. I typically choose glossy and that is the default. Okay. Then it gives you, um, you can build your cover online using their free online tool. You can have a professional cover design starting at $399. <laughs> you can upload a print ready PDF cover. So you can design it on your own in whatever um, software that, or whatever application you want to use and then save it as a PDF. I usually do the build your cover online and since I haven't started this one, I'll click on there just so you can see what that looks like. You launch what's called a cover creator and it's asking me something about flash, which I've never seen and I just got a new computer. So I don't know if that's going to, Oh, it is. I was actually going to congratulate you for using flash the right way. So don't worry about it. Oh, yay. <laughs> I don't know what I did. I just licked. Okay. Um, they have limited choices here. They're, um, mm -hmm. when I say limited, I mean, there's like 25 or 30. There's a good number of choices that you can choose from for layouts. And from those layouts, you can upload uh, JPEGs, um, you can upload you know, photographs, images, anything like that. And then it walks you through the process of um, creating the print copy for the cover. So I'm pulling up um, one of their templates. It automatically put the title and subtitle and my author name mm -hmm. there on the template. And had I chosen any of the others, it would have transition, translated that over. And even within the cover styles, you can choose different themes. So I'm going to choose a different theme here just so you can see how um, the different looks that are available and hmm. the different um, styles and fonts. That whole background image there, I have an image that I intend mm -hmm. to use that I would upload. But you can see a different feel for the different um, covers. Uh, you can uh, play with the title or uh, and subtitle. There's um, options to add an author photo and back cover text, a publisher logo. You can change the font and frame color. And again, you can, mm. if you're not happy with that, you can completely go to a different cover design and it will translate the title and author information over to that new cover. So on this one, you see the title and author on this, uh, the left-hand side of the book vertically and the subtitle underneath the photograph. And again, I would um, uh, choose something, you know, another image here, which I have uh, not really looked to see one that um, um, to share right now. So, but that's where you could just upload whatever image you want. So it's very um, user friendly. I mean, step by step, taking you th through it all. And Kathy, what about like ebook covers? Mm -hmm. Does it so just it, do a subset of your print book cover, or is there a whole separate tool for it? So if you create your cover using this um, build your cover online tool, it will just translate that over to an ebook. Uh, let me go to, my author page on Amazon and show you an example of, um, of, done some different things. This is what we call a shameless plug. <laughs> no. Oh, I mean, yes. So, um, 
I have, here's a book that I have two different covers, a paperback called, I thought I heard a were werewolf Halloween mm -hmm. poems for early readers, paperback cover here, the third one in the listing. But then the fifth one is the Kindle cover for, I thought I heard a werewolf. It's the same image, but I actually created those separately. There is a, a Kindle uh, picture book creator app. It's specifically for picture books. And uh, I, I did those in a, uh, in a particular order that it, it just, um, I, the Kindle book creator app creates the cover image in a little bit different way than, hmm. now here's, um, and I'm kind of talking in circles here. This is a book that ended up with two different covers. This is must be nice poems only school librarians will understand. So none of you will understand any of those um, secret book. There's the Kindle cover and the paperback cover looks completely different. Uh, but I created them at different times and uh, using different software. But if you do the cover uh, with the cover book creator in Create Space, then that cover can translate over to the ebook. You don't have to. You could upload a completely different cover for an ebook. But if you want to keep the same cover, which I did for um, most of my books, then um, that just it it helps the audience to recognize the books in multiple formats. Mm -hmm. So Kathy, how do you promote your books? I mean, how do you get the word out that you've got a new book out? Um, I use various social media. Um, oh, sorry about this beautiful cascade thing that I keep creating. Um, certainly social media. I have a specific Twitter account called and a poem that was the title of the first book that I wrote. And so that's the, uh, the label for my website. I have a designated website at uh, andapoem.com and I use at andapoem as a Twitter handle. Andapoem, uh, from back in where I grew up in the Bible Belt down in the deep south, that was a traditional a format for um, pastors when they were creating their sermons, three points and a poem. And you could go just about to any Southern Baptist church in North Louisiana and you were prepared the three points and conclude with a poem. So uh, this is the and a poem. It's that poem that can be used to sum it all up. Um, you hear lots of those in rural Kentucky and rural North Carolina. Both. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a, um, a Facebook page that's called and a poem. So that's the, the tagline that I use. It's, and I use that regardless um, of the type of book that I'm creating, because usually my books are uh, in rhyming text. So even the picture books are, I still have them categorized under that and a poem um, moniker. Now I noticed one or two of your books are um, like devotionals. Is that, is that right? I have one that's a devotional read, ponder, pray. And okay. is that uh, more for adults? Right. It, it, it would actually work for um, probably upper elementary um, through adult, um, there is one poem about Rahab, I think, in there that might, um, you know, be more appropriate for upper elementary, middle school, and up. Although, I mean, I don't get into but you, kind but of you really crazy wrote that. things. But you I really mean, wrote that tame. for adults, right? Um, yes, the audience uh, intended audience um, would be adults, but it would be appropriate for um, older students as well and it includes a poem and um, a passage um, some three questions to um, uh, answer and ponder and a, and um, then that poem to conclude so you read the passage ponder with the three questions and there's the poem oh and the pray there's a little uh, a short uh, suggested prayer to go along with the topic for the passage in the poem. So. 
Now, uh, on my page where I'm looking at this, I notice it says zero for Kindle Unlimited. Uh, that's a subscription service through Amazon that my wife, my wife plows through books quicker than anybody I know. And um, so she usually is reading about a book a day. And so we've subscribed to this and most of the Kindle published books end up in that. Do you get a cut? Do you get anything from books like this? I, I, I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Yes, there, um, you have different options for, um, royalties when you, it takes you through that process and you can choose different pricing and royalty options and one of those is to participate in the Kindle lending library and um, and you can choose to opt in or opt out of some there's, of those different things. There's an advantage in that you know those count uh, in the rankings of the book, you know, even yeah. if some people have gotten it for free, that pushes you up higher in the rankings, which gives you more visibility and which can lead to more traditional sales. Right. And you get, you earn money based on, like if someone finishes reading the book, you, you do get um, a portion of that, but it's like they just read like a, a page or two, then you don't get anything. But yeah, if someone reads it and they finish the whole thing, then you do get like a little bit of a royalty for that. <laughs> Well, I read this whole book. And those royalty checks are fun to get. I can say that. Yes, they are. <laughs> I'm actually like I have like four yeah. whole devotionals that I only want to publish on this this service. So, and that's the one thing that, especially with like the books that you published, Kathy, is that they're they're not really long books. You're not looking at like a fifty thousand word manuscript that you're trying to publish. You, if you have something that's just like a, like we're talking about pastors that we started talking about that um, early on is like the premise for why we started talking about this. Is like if you just have like a handful of sermons that you want to publish, you've got an ebook right there. Just put it together and sell it. Oh, absolutely. And I have a friend that, uh, as a gift for Christmas, her husband just over the course of the year would write down things she would say. And this is going to sound so corny, but um, like there's a rabbit that's in their backyard. So she might come in and say, well, I spoke to the rabbit today and he said to tell you hello. And so he, you know, would jot that down or she might come hmm. in and say just some just quirky thing. He put a quote on each page and created a book of just these quirky things that, that she says. And he gave that to her as a gift. Now he has no intention of trying to market this to other people. Although I read parts of the book out loud to some other friends and we were just roaring. I mean, just absolutely laughing because it's just so quirky and some of them, I mean, we could just picture her saying them. So actually I'm going to end up buying the book. So they're going to have a sale there. Um, <laughs> so there are other reasons certainly to create um, eBooks or even print books through the create space um, option just to have that own record, that own, um, legacy of the work you've done, the um, whether that's sermons that you've created, Bible studies, or just your own notes, to have that available to share with family, to share with friends, or for the potential to market that further. Another possibility would be to uh, to to you know if you've written a blog over the years, have you mm -hmm. ever had a blog series to take some of those. Uh, and, and, you know, edit that a little bit and put that together uh, as a book as well. They do send you a print yeah, copy. A, you know, whatever you want to write, someone out there will likely want to read it. Now you've got to find a way to connect you with that person. But, you know, that's... Uh, you anything but your but time, write, you know. We, novels on their blog once once a week. And yeah, I know a guy that does that. Yeah, I don't know anybody who does that. Yeah, we we have Kathy and I have a friend who you know he's he was self publishing back in the days where you had to pay a service and then you had to pay for the copies to be printed mm -hmm. and then he would always have like you know three hundred of them in his trunk or something like that um, and and th there were good books but he had to put all that money up front you don't have to put money up front for that. I mean really all this is costing you is your time and when you're talking about an ebook. You know, I, yeah, I've been sharing examples of print book and ordering print books at cost. When you're talking about an ebook, you don't have that inventory you have to keep or copies mm -hmm. to buy. 
I mean, that's out there and it's available. And you do have the option if you do the create space to go in and edit the books and do revisions. All of that is free of charge. They do mm -hmm. offer some paid services that you can take advantage of um, from um, designing covers to marketing, that sort of thing. I've not investigated those particular avenues. I've only looked at the, the free opportunities that are available. And then for editing, I because I work at um, a Department of Education, I have access to folks who can um, do that not on their work time, but after work, you know, as friends to help with that. And certainly um, my husband, who has an English major and who was an English major and um, can help with, with that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, like that, uh, Rick, you were talking about the, the printing. Uh, can you see my screen, guys? Yes. So this book, my, this is written by my boss. This is his sabbatical journey. And uh, he had his own self-publishing uh, uh, kind of publishing house called Spirit, or Script, Spiritual Journey Press. And he literally, exactly what he said, he would make these books and he would print out like 50, 60 copies at a time or 100 copies at a time. And he would have them and he'd have to like do the mailings to people. And three years ago or two years ago, uh, I helped him convert all of his old manuscripts into eBooks. And so this is literally one of his things. This had been out of print and now it's just on Kindle. So now all he gets is money from it and he doesn't keep it. He donates all the profits to a, uh, to uh, different missionaries and, and ministries, but it's, he, he was amazed. He's like, he's like, wait a minute, I don't have to worry about pub printing copies anymore. And you're like, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. So like nothing goes out of print. It's, it's, it's you keep yeah. it and it just is still there. And it's pretty cool too, because like I've got a, a friend, like this one I went to go run and get is like, he's written three books and here's two of them that I just bought last week on Amazon. Um, one is like World War Me is a book on spiritual warfare. Then the other one is the purpose of, of singleness and he but published both of those through Amazon and so he doesn't have to worry about having any physical inventory where like he does because he does the Bible study every week but there's no physical inventory that he has when I went and ordered these they were printed by Amazon like even if you turn to like the last page in the book it'll tell you when the book was printed yeah. so this one was printed uh, January 29th and yeah, so like there's no physical inventory that you have to worry about or any of that. You can write it, put it out there, and whenever someone buys it, that's when it gets printed and, and created and mailed out to them. And it even works with uh, prime shipping, which is a really nice thing. Yeah. So, um, LaRosa, what did you use to actually write your book? Um, to write my book, uh, started off using Microsoft Word, but I since switched over to, to Scrivener. And that's where I do all of my writing now. And so. Yeah, we did a whole show on Scrivener. Yeah. What about? So actually, let me so. try to share my screen. I can show, show off. Your book. Yeah, you need to show your book, uh, LaRosa. We love so the Scrivener. The Scrivener is wonderful. Yeah, here we go. So, yeah, so like here's raw material in Scrivener where I basically have a manuscript set up and it's broken down to all the. the the individual pieces where like if I scroll through, this is the entire book, but I've got like the introduction, the first chapter, and then instead of doing everything all in one piece, like each subsection is its own little document. So I can just focus on that one little section, which is, which is really nice because then it helps me be able to go in and reorganize everything. And the nice thing about this is because I set this up as a novel uh, template, is all the way down here, down in the front matter, I've got the paperback novel um, stuff. So here's stuff that's specific to a paperback novel. And then also have the ebook version. So like where there are some things in there, like the table of contents where you, you don't necessarily need that in, in an ebook and it's automatically generated for me. But and I might want the copyright to look a little bit different or something like that, where I can have my so when, front matter look differently between the... Guys, just to explain, when you compile a Scrivener project, you can you can set your own front matter. And so if you look in... in scroll down a little bit, LaRosa. Yeah, I'll pull it up. In your, in your doc. So 
like there's a whole bunch of different versions of front front matter that you can use and it's manuscript paperback ebook and so you can say when i'm compiling this i want it to use the ebook version as the front matter and so it'll automatically throw it at the beginning of the the order of of uh of contents of the project and then export it out to an ebook format yep. and so uh, it's really cool like here's a compile screen then i can go in and check all the different sections that i want to include in the book then it says add front matter i can choose ebook or paperback and then compile for and so I can do ebook. Um, so for me, I normally do either ebook or PDF. And PDF is for when I'm ready to, to print it off and for create space. That's where I've gone in and set all of my margins and all the fonts that I want to use and all of that. And then I'll take that PDF and put that into create space and get it all uploaded there. But the nice thing here is like if I ever need to go back in and it makes some corrections like I actually went in about a month ago I had a bunch of typos that I needed to go in and fix because mm -hmm. I hadn't done it since I published the book and I finally got around to doing it. So all I did was come into Scrivener, make my changes, export a new PDF, upload that and it's all done. And cool. that's how easy it is. And then export a new um, e um, EPUB, upload that to Amazon and there's the new version right there. So where did you get your um, template for the for the book? Is it you created it or is it? Um, it's a template that comes pre-installed with the uh, with the app. Well, I was I just opened up my copy of it, and what which one did you use? Um, novel. I, I'm curious because I, I opened up. Uh, let's see here, new project. Mm -hmm. Is that what you go to? Yeah, new project, and then you choose you novel. Use the novel template. Okay, see, I don't I don't even see a novel template. I see fiction. Yeah, it's under fiction. fiction. Yeah. Oh, novel with parts or not? Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> so you use the novel even though you wrote a, a nonfiction yep. book. Okay. And you can, all the stuff that's in like the novel template, you can create by hand. It's yeah. just a pain in the neck. What else, uh, anything else that you guys know of to recommend for actually, you know, uh, writing and, and organizing the book together. Yeah. I mean, you yes. can word, but there what else? are two things that I end up using. Um, I'm sharing my screen again. I use this on my iPad, and this is what I'm doing when I type. I actually write my sermon in Scrivener, but when I go through to do the final edits and I want to create my my presenter notes, I'll convert it to an ebook. And open it up in iBooks, and I this is the app I use. It's called Creative Book Builder. It's actually a very uh, powerful tool that runs on iOS. There is an Android version that always kind of lags behind, and uh, I essentially convert all my text out to Markdown and port it into a new chapter, and it you know does the conversion, and I compile it as an ebook, and uh, and it'll open up in iTunes, and it actually does a really nice job it's it's got a lot of flexibility and um kathy you might be interested because it'll do traditional ebooks but it'll also do fixed layout like picture books so you can set up like an enhanced type of ebook for for a uh, you know an advanced reader which is really kind of cool and the price and, is right it's only three dollars and 99 cents. yeah it's like, i mean for the price it's amazing there's a couple things like it i need to figure out how it handles footnotes and stuff like that i've never quite played with it enough to do it but if you're Wanting to just take a couple essays and you want to create your own little ebook right in iOS and it's they actually have ways to publish um, to different stores right inside the book. It's a it's a great little tool and it's it's kept up been kept up pretty well. Um, the other tool this is one Larosa almost used, and I'm fond of it because I think the the output that it creates for ebooks is better than Scrivener, even though Scrivener's my my uh, my preferred writing tool, um, and this is Ulysses. So Ulysses is is set up looks a lot like script uh, like Scrivener. You can create groups over in your library in the left. Uh, the groups have different sheets, which is this middle pane here, and then your editors over here. And it's all done in plain text, so it's essentially a version of Markdown um, to create the different formatting. 
and uh, it's it'll compile out to a really nice ebook e uh, when you click on the share. So you select the group or the the things that you want to share. Let me get this here. How and, much is uh, Ulysses? This is like forty bucks. Yeah, it's like forty-five bucks. Yeah, it's and Scrivener and Ulysses are two absolutely amazing tools. I I really don't have a whole lot terrible to say about either of them. Um, I know Larissa, your big thing with it was that Ulysses doesn't have a uh, built-in way to do to do a table of contents for it for uh, like exporting out to Word. Yeah, or that's PDF the or something. Yeah, that's the main but, drawback. But the nice thing about Ulysses, and this is what I, it's funny because I'm always I've always found myself defending Ulysses, even though I use Scrivener. The nice thing about Ulysses is that everything is very structured. So like you, they have like real headers. Like that's what this single hashtag is up here. So you can export out to Word, and um, it'll have all the styles there, and you can create your your table of contents right from the styles. So there's like there's certain things that it. Oh, looks, looks like we just lost him, but I can continue with what he was saying is basically with Ulysses is you can export it and then do all your markup in Word and generate a table of contents and then use that as your print version. Um, but if all you're doing is just ebooks, Ulysses is great because it'll give you a, a really nice looking ebook that you can use. But that was the main reason why I didn't go with it because it's not necessarily geared for doing um, print layout. And to be quite honest, neither is Scrivener, but I'm able to tweak it around enough to get it to work for what I need. But yeah, that's the main reason why I went with Scrivener is for that reason over um, Ulysses. But I would say as... Scrivener is, you know, it's not a, a, you know, a cheap program, but it's cheaper than paying for a, you know, a, a Office 365 subscription for a year. But if you bought both, you know, uh, either the the Windows or Mac. For some reason, Windows is five dollars cheaper, or the the iOS version. If you wanted, you know, one for your computer and one for your iPad, uh, you know, you're talking sixty to sixty five dollars in order to sync between the two. And it uses Dropbox Sync, which works really well. Yeah, that's actually what yeah. I'm yeah. writing in right now. So, and it goes um, on sale like twice a year on like Stack Social because I got yeah, my copy for twenty bucks. Yeah, percent off. Yeah, it's amazing. Wes, so I was noticing it's, it's, that, that creative book builder you were showing a while ago, that's also available for the Mac. Have you used that at all? I have not used that on the Mac at all. It really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, yeah it's, it's available it's, for the Mac as well. Same price, $3.99. I will have to take a look at it. And if you want to go like the, the really super simple route, it, this route will, I mean, it'll cost you a little money for each book that you want to do. But if you don't want to fiddle around with having to figure out print layout and all that kind of stuff, you can go to pressbooks.com p r e s s b o o k s.com and basically what they have done is they built a wordpress plugin and that allows you to go in and create your own ebook so writing your book is just as simple as writing in wordpress and then you can go in and organize everything um, upload your cover and do all that kind of stuff and then I think it's like $59 or something around that. And you can get a print ready PDF and an ebook um, ready to go. So the, the PDF that they give you is ready to be uploaded to create space or anywhere else. And then the ebook is ready to go as well. And that's actually what I used the very first time that I published um, raw material. Um, the first go around back in uh, 2015 is I used that because there's also an open source version of it. So I actually downloaded that and put it up on my own server. And so I kind of bypassed the whole cost factor. But yeah, if, you, if you're if you a techie and you want to kind of play around, you can do it that way. Just put it on your own server or something and, and get it free of charge. I will just mention, I, I found this resource, do-it-yourself book formats, diybookformats.com. And he's got some free templates, uh, as well as some interesting guides. You know, if you're wanting to figure out how to do this in uh, Word, there's also, let's see here, InDesign, uh, Word. I, I he has Scrivener say, as a section on here, but he, it says, hey, Scrivener's cool. I'm going to probably put some up here soon. 
<laughs> so he doesn't talk a lot about Scrivener, but InDesign and, and Word, he sh goes into a lot of detail. If you have access uh, to InDesign, it makes a really good ebook. It does. Yeah, it, I haven't. I don't even know how to use it. I mean, I guess it's similar to the other Adobe programs yeah. with layouts and with. And, and you know what else makes a really good EPUB? Pages. <laughs> Pages. Okay. Well, that's something we haven't talked about. Is iBooks author? Well, it's something you can create some pretty. Um, multimedia rich books mm -hmm. unfortunately it's kind of a i mean is is the ibooks author really being developed and used i, I, I think it is but 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 even outside of the ibooks author just the regular uh regular pages like what wes was talking about that, that, that's what we did that's what we did uh kathy's first book with we we created it in pages because we were able to export, you know, in every direction. It, it does a really good clean ebook format. Yeah, the one thing you want to keep in mind, Mac, only. Mac yeah, or, or mind is that um, if you if you do want to publish through iBooks, you have to use iBooks Author. And that was the one problem that I had when I first published no, my book. That's not true. You can you can publish any EPUB through iBooks. No, you have to have a Mac in order to publish on iBooks Author. Oh, an <laughs> iBooks right. Author, yes. But yeah, no, I have I you have to have a Mac, but you don't have to do it through iBooks author. No. No, but yeah, you didn't you no, have to own a Mac. If you want to push yes. a book through Apple Store, you have to use that. So gotcha. Yeah. Now that makes sense. But there is a way around that, which I used, is um smashwords.com. <laughs> and Smashwords is a really simple way for you to publish your ebook pretty much anywhere. Cool. And so like if you only have a Windows machine and you want your book on iBooks, go through Smashwords, um, upload your your EPUB through them, and then they'll distribute it through all the different channels. They'll do like um, iBooks, Barnes and Noble, Kobo, um, Google Play, like the whole gamut, and they'll even have it available like where the library catalog, so it can be available in libraries and anywhere else. So cool. that's a good route to go as well. Nice. That's a great. That's a great option. You know, for someone like me who's using Windows a lot more lately, um, even though I'm not on one tonight. But how to publish on Smashwords? So cool. All right. Any other questions or thoughts about? Uh, uh, yeah, I did have one more thing that I just thought about, and when I was talking about the, the ISBNs earlier, the one reason why you might want to consider buying your own ISBNs. Is because if if you use the one that Amazon gives you down to, like in the like the copyright section on the product page, it'll say that it's created by CreateSpace. But I was like super picky, and so when I did mine, I went out and bought the ISBNs from um, ISBN.org. Mm -hmm. And when you do it that way, you own the ISBN, and you can set who owns that. So I wanted all my books to say published by Urban Scholar Books. Yeah, and that was the only way for that to happen, because if I used the one that Amazon gave me, then it would have said created by CreateSpace, and then everyone. Oh, and then also, flips. you can sell it more than one store. Yeah. Although well, technically, you're supposed to use a different ISBN for every different store. No. You you don't. You know every different format. Amazon. Yeah, it's every different format. Cool. So yeah, I, I have a, one ISBN for the ebook and another ISBN for the print version. Nice. When you say format, you mean ebook versus print, not like PDF versus Mobi versus. Technically, you're supposed to have a different ISBN for each one of those. For okay, but, but so EPUB versus Mobi, so Kindle versus Nook. But even but yeah, formats. even for like EPUB versus Mobi, you're supposed to have different ISBN numbers. Yeah, that's but. what I was talking about. So if you have a, if you're selling a Nook, you need to have a different ISBN as the. You don't. You don't need to. Nobody. Yell, nobody. If you're not making billions of dollars off it, nobody's going to care, but they want yeah. you to. Police will not come after you, more than likely. Well, you know, it's a different world. Uh, did anybody know of a good tool to publish .sit files? Dot who, where, when, how? The .sit that's file. Yep. That's, that's the old, remember Pocket PCs had their own Microsoft? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that, that was pretty obscure. Yeah. I thought I'd share that. I with do, you. I do I mean, know it's software that used to do PDB files up until very recently. I don't know what that was though. Oh yeah, and one more tree. And one more Something thing. Something about to a add. tree. I did have one more thing to add too. And Go ahead. 
like we were talking about um, like having people edit your book or like design covers. And like, if you don't have people in your circle of friends that are well-versed enough to go in and do like editing for you or, or doing cover art, go to fiverr.com, F-I-V-E-R-R.com. That's two R's. And you can go there, find people that are willing to do those kind of things on a relatively cheap basis. Yeah. Yeah. Kathy, haven't you used Fiverr.com? I've investigated it. Um, found a couple you were telling of, me about it. Mm -hmm, found a couple of illustrators that I thought would be good uh, potential um, sources for illustrations, but I haven't used them yet. Okay. Just for clarity's sake, you were saying Fiverr as in five. Yes, five. Because -er. I thought you were saying five. Because the, the, the old thing was like you, you pay somebody a fiver and they do something for you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me also recommend a book that I read recently that helped me to think I don't a read. lot about this. And that is, uh, if you remember, Guy Kawasaki used to be with Apple and uh, now a big entrepreneur publishing air, uh, realm. Anyway, he's got a book. that This is a very good book. It talks about from start to finish how to write and then publish and then sell your book and uh so artisanal I think, publishing yeah and and of course he's a <laughs> sharp guy. uh the kindle version is 7.99 i got it for free so uh not sure yeah i've got a free copy of that i would yeah. want i uh, like to point out an area that i've not investigated but it, i just saw um on that screenshot it said audible um, there are options through the create space and through the Amazon book creators to create audio versions of your books. And that's a goal that I have this coming year is to create some audio versions of my books. Now I've not investigated that enough to know if there are fees attached to that. Um, yeah. um but it is an option. Yeah, I can speak to that. Um, basically, if you're going through Amazon, because um, they have their own service for doing it, there are a couple of different ways you can do it where you can hire out someone to do it and basically just pay them a set fee and that's it. And then you own the audio or you can go in and split the royalties with them. And so if you do that, then whatever the sales are, you get 50% and then the person that recorded the audio gets 50% or you can just upload your own files if you're um, savvy enough to record the audio yourself. You would be good at reading some of her poetry books because, you know, poetry especially, you, you almost want the, you want to hear it from the original author. The author knows where to uh, stress and pause and all that kind of stuff uh, better than anyone else will. But know yourself. I mean, be self-aware about that because I've heard some books by the author that I went, oh, I wish they hadn't done that. Yeah, the, and the only downside to doing the Audible stuff is you only get paid for Audible when you've accumulated fifty dollars worth of royalties? That might whereas take a long time. <laughs> it's a separate company, and they take it, take their uh, yeah. Whereas, like with all the other self publishing stuff that we've talked about, you pretty much get paid monthly um, okay. for what you um, what you've made. Hey, right, anything cool. else? This has been good. Go ahead. You, you and I were about to do the same thing, Kevin. Yeah, I think I'll, turn, I'll turn it back over to you. Okay, that's fine. Uh, did you have – I'm just going to throw over, over to you one more time, Kathy. Is there anything else that you wanted to throw in here? Any any thoughts or ideas or inspiration would, or uh, jokes about Rick or anything? <laughs> oh, let me tell you. We, if we need another hour for the things I could tell you about Rick, um, I would really encourage uh, viewers and listeners to – um, investigate some of these free opportunities to experiment with creating your own book. And I think that um, once you try something like Create Space or some of the other um, low cost or free options that were mentioned, you um, will discover, you know, all sorts of um, creative ways to share information you have and ideas and thoughts and again even if it's only 
uh, a resource that you want to share with family, like my friend's husband made that book of, of her quotes just for her, um, that was a uh, good practice for him for future books he's going to write. And he has lots of books he's written. Um, but just especially with a free resource, go out there, experiment, try. You don't even have to let anyone see it. I mean, until you hit publish and say, and they send you a proof and you look at every, I mean, until you click publish, no one else is going to see that. And then once you do publish it, if you don't tell anyone it's out there, you know, likely no one's going to, to find it. Um, so you do have that option of, of removing something. I have removed a couple of books that my first couple of ones, in fact, now you can still find them in some obscure places, but I'm like, oh my goodness, after I have practiced this a little bit more, I'm so embarrassed. And so I've mm. pulled those. Um, Steps I think that we kind of left out was, you know, especially for these print books, they send you a print proof in the mail. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of times, uh, you know, Kathy will discover something looking at the print version that was staring her right in the face on the screen. And, mm -hmm. and there's just something about having that in hand that, that you know, you see it differently. And, and of course, then it's, I'll tell you as her husband, it's agonizing for her you know, because she's, she's ready to hit that publish button. It's agonizing for her when she has to make that correction and then let Amazon send her another proof before it's final. Which it's, I mean, and it sounds like we're indicating this is a month long process. It is a, I mean, sometimes that process happens mm -hmm. in less than a week, just a matter of a few mm -hmm. days, depending on the size of the book, I'm doing short picture books. Um, and you, and you say, oh, did it come today? Did it come today? I yeah. <laughs> and you don't, and that's the thing too is like for the first book or two you might want to get the proof but after a while it's like for me where i was just doing a reprint with typos i didn't need to have them send me a, another physical copy for me to look at so i just looked at the pdf on on screen that they had for me and said yes it's ready to go from there but yeah, yeah it's I nice that when i do this i'm doing proof. digital only so for me it's just not gonna need a proof well, and one thing I would one say with the, I ask you. go ahead, go ahead. I would <clears throat> say with the ebooks, um, the and this could be through the picture book uh, creator app that I have for Kindle rather than Create Space. I can't remember right now, but you have the ability to look at a proof of, on how it would look on a Kindle Fire, mm -hmm. on an iPad, on an iPhone, on mm -hmm. a Android. I mean, you can it lets you see what it's going to look like on those different types of devices and yep. um, allows you that opportunity then to tweak some formatting to help it be more friendly for a wider variety of devices. And that's mm -hmm. uh, uh, very uh, beneficial to have that ability to see that beforehand. Cool. What I was going to ask, uh, that, that's a great point because that, you know, layout is very important in those kinds of books. Um, if you find a bunch of typos after you've done the publish, when you're doing this on uh, Amazon, you, can, you, can you go in and like point 2.0 or, you know, 2.1 version and edit afterwards? Oh, I'm just nodding my head. She's I guess I should say out loud. Yes, you can. Um, Let the do a, <laughs> you can do a revised edition and um, still maintain that ISBN number and and that sort of thing. So I have um, um, pulled like um, unpublished in Create Space a particular edition because I wanted to go back in and um, tweak or change a few things. Um, I think one of mine, I went back to bold some words that I decided I wanted to have them stand out a little bit more. So you can, and then you can republish it. You have to get a, you know, either get a print proof or um, approve online that, you know, you agree that the changes look okay. So you so, still have so to go through that approval process again. There's possibly some first editions out there, you know, oh. that if you become a famous Ooh. author that, you know, making millions, those might be worth a lot. Yeah, Happy Mansfield, right there next to the Tom Brady jersey. What, what has been really interesting is, you know, when sometimes 
you can go to any of her pages and there are people like there are these other uh, booksellers who are selling her books for, you know, lower prices. And so, and that's just, it's, it's bizarre. Yeah. You know, mm. It's that they would order them and sell them at a different price. I, I don't know. People do weird things. Yeah. Like, the, you know, Tom Brady jerseys right out of his locker. Yeah. Um, right out of his bag. Another thing yeah, that I found too with Amazon, like with my book right now, is Amazon still controls the ability to set their own price whenever they want to, like even for your own book. So like the, the list price for my paperback version of raw material is nine ninety nine, and over Christmas I set it down to five ninety nine, and then um, on January first I put pushed it back to nine ninety nine. Well, Amazon decided to keep it at five ninety nine. But the nice thing about that, though, is even though Amazon's selling it for five ninety nine, I still get the full royalty for that. Really? Oh. So set your book for ninety nine ninety nine. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> and uh, one more thing too oh, is wait. like if you are if you are selling both like the ebook and Kindle version on Amazon, you have two choices to where like if someone buys the the paperback version. You can give them the Kindle version for free or give it to them at a discounted price. So, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so like if someone buys the paperback version of my book, I give them the Kindle, ver the, the Kindle version for free. Nice. Cool. Okay. Well, uh, this, this was vastly helpful to me as someone who is hoping to do this very soon. And I actually have two books in me that I'm itching to get out. And so... Uh, I, I feel like I want to do this. One is the, the one I shared with you, and the other one is I want to turn my dissertation into a, a book, which, by the way, that's a great subject for your, if you have a doctoral dissertation, to put it in ebook format. You may want to, you know, change it around or rejigger it a little bit just so it's more publishable and Rick. interesting to people who aren't, you know, PhD behind their name. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, Thank you so much. First of all, Kathy, your wealth of knowledge was uh, insightful, helpful, interesting. And uh, finally, we had a Mansfield on the screen that <laughs> we weren't repulsed by. Uh, oh, thanks no, a lot. Just, <laughs> Thank you for having uh, me and, on the show. No, it was really great. We really appreciate you coming on the show. And LaRosa, you, your knowledge is, you know, the, your experience has been incredibly helpful. So thank you for uh, being willing to share this. And uh uh, Rick and Wes, uh, you know, I don't know. What hey, you got it was good to be but... here. <laughs> no, I had, I had some good coffee good while I was listening. So thank you all so much. Just going to uh, be quiet. We do this every week, okay. and uh, it gets published on theotech.com in video format. You can find the link there to our YouTube page. Please go over there and subscribe. You can also uh, find us in iTunes. You can find the link on theotech.com to our iTunes as well as uh, the Google Play Store and other places where better podcasts are sold. Uh, actually, not sold, but uh, uh, we do an audio version of it, too, every week. And by the way, recently, uh, our good friend Wes Allen and I did a Theotech Extra where I interviewed Wes. That was published uh, on Monday, yesterday, at Theotech.com. So go get a listen and hear him discuss his life as a pastor and uh, a tech guru, um, and also uh, find out what his thoughts are on the movie Arrival. And uh, we had uh, a nice yeah. discussion about that. Uh, we, we didn't go into all the detail because we didn't want to give away spoilers. You can't, but, uh, you our can't conversation just after the, the movie. Show was, You'll ruin it. And, and I'm, I'm chomping at the bit now to watch it again. I'm going to have to buy it. Uh, I haven't seen it wait to rent it. It's really good. Yeah, so anyway, go ahead and get that at theotech.com. And so we'll be doing one of those. La Rosa and Wes, I've got you in my sights. We're going to get one of you two in the next week or two. You already got me. You're talking Rick. Not Wes. I'm sorry, Rick. Uh, one of you you two in the, you, in you the did next one on, Did you do one on Antoine already? Yeah. Yeah, we did yeah. Antoine first. He's the I most, I, I think, colorful. I need, I, need, I need to watch both of those. I yeah, haven't seen them yet. Uh, it's entitled uh, Antoine from the Future. And that's what I think that's what I titled it. So, but uh, anyway, we're done. We're signing off. And thanks for sticking with us if you're still here at this late hour. Good night. See ya.